how we doing guys welcome back to the channel and this is my ninja guide for the console i have been a little bit reluctant to make this video however it has been heavily requested by my subscribers on youtube i've got a lot of messages on discord and on um, pm'd on xbox as well so this is for you guys out there there will be some links in the description down below to help you navigate the guide if there's any specific areas you want to focus on for yourselves um, but the basic gist of the guide is we're going to be talking about the gearing what kind of gear you want to go on, get on your ninja what you want to prioritize what skills you're going to be unlocking um, what your your hot bar is going to look like and then we're going to go into combos and we're going to talk um, about some catches and some tips and some tricks it's going to be a very foundation level this is not going to be a super in-depth detailed video like let's say yellow's one yellow has got a great video for the ninja guide it's going to be a lot better than mine i'll be linking that down in the description below however i have noticed there is no real decent ninja pvp guide out there for the console so I'll try and fill that gap as best I can now, and I'm sure someone will do a better job in that in the future. But let's get into it, because I know my videos are usually quite long. Um, in terms of skills, the awakening skills we're going to start with first, because it's easier to go through. Um, obviously, you're going to want to get your grab. Uh, you, you start with your awakening buff. Vengeful barrier, I haven't actually picked this up because I've been using my skill points other places. But this is an important pickup for when you want to grind Archman's Ventral Barrier is a good start down there. Murderous Intent is definitely something you want to max out. Silent Charge you want to pick up. Seamless you want to pick up. Shadow Cloak you want to pick up. Flow Block Jump you want to grab. Do not get Sudden Decapitation. You want to max out Serpent Ascension. Do not get Flow Execution. Do not get Vacuum Slash. Uh, you will be picking up uh, Chaos Spree when you want to start grinding history. It's not too bad for Archmans as well if you do need to use it for health regen. So if you're grinding Archmans, you might this can also help you there. But this is not a PvP move. You will never ever use this move in PvP. Um, the Flow Match Explosion, you don't want to pick that up. Uh, Katana Shower, max that out. And Drastic Measure, leave this till later on. It's not very important. You... I barely ever use this skill, but I have got it maxed out. This is probably one of the last skills you want to max out. It is the ninja's ult as well. It is pretty underwhelming for an ult. However, I would say it's probably better than the pre-awakening ult, which is your blade spin. It will definitely be locking the blade spin, and I lock the ult as well because I like using my rage. Now, in terms of the pre-awakening skills, uh, you'll be ignoring these first couple ones. You definitely want to get block jump. Um, target chase is a good skill to pick up, but pick that up again later on. It's a medium priority skill. It's nice, it's a perk, but it's not essential. Uh, Fatal Blow is an important skill, you want to get that absoluted. Brace is also a very, very important skill. Get that absoluted as soon as possible. The flow for um, Fatal Blow is also another important one to pick up. Crescent Slash is not put at all. This will be very, very late after you've gotten um, Drastic Measure and some other items, then thinking about getting this to Absolute. Uh, we've already talked about Brace, you want Absolute as soon as possible. Ninja Step is one of your most important skills, so get that leveled up as quickly as possible. I don't use Throwing Kick. Um, I don't feel I need it, but if you guys liking like having the extra catch, if you level up throwing kick T2, I believe you can cancel the throw kick with a fox claw. But that's not my playstyle, so I just keep it locked. Uh, floor sweeping, you definitely want to put a point in this as soon as possible. And later on, when you've got your core skills, you can absolute it then. But just unlock it for now, so get the one point in it to start with. Uh, these items here don't matter. So Shuriken Malice, another very important skill. Get that absolute as soon as possible. Shuriken Flight is a meh skill. It's it's okay. I wouldn't... I guess say it's a medium priority like Target Chase. I'd probably get Target Chase before you get Shuriken Flight. Because it's not a catch that's very good to use all the time. It is very situational. But it can come in handy. And if you obviously get an absolute, it does do more damage. Uh, Shining Blade definitely, or you, that comes actually that comes as default. Uh, Shadow Slash medium priority. Um, you, uh, you, again, absolute this towards the end. You know when you're doing a drastic measure and other items like that. After you've got those done, maybe come back and look at the Shadow Slash. But it's not an important ability early on. 
However, smoke screen is very, very important. So get that apps well, tier five as soon as possible. Definitely pick up your concealment. Heart aiming is semi important. It's kind of hard to use early game, so maybe don't absolute it straight away. Focus on a couple of the other skills. But I would say this is more important than uh, Drastic Measure, Shuriken Flight, and the other ones because it does do a lot of damage. It's got 100%, it's your only 100% accuracy skill, but it can be quite hard to aim early on. Um, so do keep that in mind. And Suicide Fall, get that absolute. It's not super, super important to get it absolute straight away because it starts with 100% accuracy, but it, I'd probably do the absolute grab right around the same time you're getting your heart aiming to absolute ankle cutter just get it to tier 5 to max out the dp debuff this is going to be useful for pvp but really really good for pve you can again absolute this later on after you've done your heart aiming and your grabs drastic measures the other bits and bobs then think about coming back and absoluting this skill same thing with gross eating Get it to tier 3 to reduce the cooldown from 13 seconds to 9 seconds and then you can worry about absoluting that later on. Um, I really liked Foxclaw early game, even now I throw in a few of my combos, it's got really good damage, it's got some lifesteal on it. I'd say absolute this, it's a little bit above medium priority but it's not one of your most important skills but absolute this when you can. Bread and butter, ninja shadow stomp, get this absolute as soon as possible. Get the clone absolute as soon as possible as well. The clone does crazy damage. When you when you float someone with the uh, shadow stomp and then you hit them in the clone, they just get deleted at the higher APs. Boss slaughter, I'm starting to level this myself now. Um, I'm not very good at using it, but if you guys are very mechanically skilled and you pick up mechanics quickly, boss slaughter is a very, very strong move. But you can't just randomly use it, you've got to use it at the right time, because if not, you will get CC. so keep that in mind. Um, another, uh, so sorry, Nin Ninja Shackles, you want to get to tier 4, so you can unlock your Rebalm later on. And again, around the time you're doing a Drastic Measure and all the other stuff, maybe you can come back and get this Absolute then, but it's not super important on the early skill point level. Uh, Blade Spin is one of your most important skills, you want to Absolute that as soon as possible. Um, Moonlight probably around the same time you're coming back to do your shackles think about leveling up your moonlight to absolute it's not super important early on it's a decent catch but you can't use it too much you, you literally throw it in every now and again when your opponent isn't expecting it because it's very punishable this skill it does lock you in an animation that is not protected but it is an extra option in the ninja kit beheading the dead bread and butter move it again you want to absolute this as soon as possible and you definitely want to be maxing out all your killer trainings, infinite mastery and skilled hunter when you can as well. Uh, that is a high priority, so you do these way before you get to your medium priority items like drastic measure and the other, other uh, skills we've been talking about. You definitely want these maxed out before then. And then for your <coughs> rebalms, you'll be picking up illusion restraint and the oni shadow. These are the two rebalms that you want to pick up here and they will go on your ring menu so let's talk about the ring menu next um so the vip items on your ring menu blade spin illusionary restraint um sorry not that the only shadow and the concealment these are all very very important items to have on your ring menu and then the extra optional items that I've got are my ring menu that you can switch out for other skills if you prefer to be, uh, use your skills differently than me. Um, again, Moonlight is one of the optional skills. Shackles is the other optional skill. If you don't want these on your ring menu, don't waste skill points leveling them up because they cannot be activated if they aren't on your ring menu. So those two can be traded out for something else, they're not as important. And block jump as well. Block jump is optional, but I'd say it's pretty, pretty important. Um, I'm gonna link my controller setup guide to you guys as well. So there is a few tricks I do with my elite controller. I remap block jump to be on my left thumb stick. I remap blade spin to be on my right thumb stick. And then that also means my two, um, my two concealments are also on my thumb sticks as well. So I can activate them with great ease and react with them when I need to. 
So other skills that you could trade those out for is really only smokescreen. Smokescreen is the one item I don't have on my ring menu. Um, if I was to put it on there, I'd probably get rid of the uh, ninja shackles. But maybe I'll do that in the future because I really don't use shackles that often. However, <coughs> there are other items you can put on there. Boss slaughter, you can definitely put on there if you really want to come with a heading on there. There are other items you can definitely put on your ring menu if you don't like the button presses. Uh, but the only other real VIP skill that I don't have on my ring menu, in my opinion, would be the smoke screen. Um, target chase is another one that you can also put in your ring menu, but you can activate this in your awakening by pressing a back and left bumper. So if you just do that, you've got your target chase active and then you can run around. So let's start talking about food rotation and gearing. So to start with food, um, the three foods I like to use for PvP is the Cam Sylvia meal, 150 health is always nice, 200 stamina, you're not crazy stamina dependent on a ninja, but it does definitely help out. 5% back, back attack damage is really, really good as a ninja because you're trying to get the back of your opponent all the time. Valencia meal is a must for PvP, ignore resistance is 4%, plus resistance is 4%, evasion plus 10, and it's got a nice little damage reduction from monsters of minus 6%, obviously not very important in PvP, but... The first three are all fantastic skill, uh, fantastic boosts for your PvP. Um, Serendia Meal is something I wouldn't use in my regular food rotation, but if you do have the upgraded food, so the special foods where you can do four food rotations, Serendia Meal would be the one that you'd have as your fourth food to get the five AP, which is nice, the 10 accuracy, which is really, really good, and the one crit, helps a couple of your moves out, but most of the ninja's moves have built-in crit in them. And finally, the other main food would be the King of Jungle Hamburg. So you've got the all, ignore all resistances of 3% and crit hit damage of 5%. Again, ignore resistances, key for PvP, crit, crit hit. Like I said, ninja has a lot of built-in crit into his skills, so that's always gonna help you out. And in terms of gearing, there are plenty of different builds that you can definitely go for. My main recommendation is your main goal is to hit 261 AP no matter what build you have. If you want to have an evasion build, hybrid evasion build, no problem. But try and get to 261 AP. 261 AP was when a ninja comes online and he's able to kill a lot of different classes of soft cap DP at great efficiency, reducing the amount of times that you're unprotected during your skill animations where other people in RBF and large scale can kill you. However, in a 1v1 scenario, obviously evasion is going to help you out a lot. So you don't need 261 AP to kill people, but you do 261 AP will allow you to kill them quickly. So I'd recommend for that to be your main goal. Uh, when you are ready to start going for pen weapons, I'd also recommend starting with your Penzaka. A lot of your damage skills are in your pre-awakening and you need the accuracy. Serpent Ascension is really the only skill in your awakening that the Pen Dandy is going to really boost. And obviously Serpent Ascension is the hardest hit hitting skill in the Ninja kit as well. So if you do really want to go for the Katana first, you can. I'd recommend going for the short sword. For PvE, the shuriken, the Nuva shuriken is what you want and make sure you get the shuriken and not the kunai. Unless they've changed something, the kunai doesn't allow you to do the uh, shuriken malice. That's why you want the shuriken. And for PvE, you are going to want a kutum. Until you hit 261 AP on your, both your pre-awakening and your awakening with the Nuva, at that point, the kutum is not going to be as useful. You will be staying on your Nuva for PvE as well. And later on, when you hit 261 AP on your pre-awakening and awakening on your Kudum again, you'll switch back to your Kudum. If you want to sell that Kudum during that period, go ahead and sell it. But you can also hold on to it as well. In terms of armors, it is probably best in slot for a ninja to have a pen heave here rather than a Tet boss helmet. Um, because evasion does stack pretty well with the ninja. However, I just like having full boss gear. So I've decided to go with the pen uh, Gaith helmet. 
obviously the better boss helmet would be the griffin's helmet but i don't have that i don't i've got the gaiaths and also pen grunnel is exactly the same as pen heave and all, everything i've looked at is exactly the same except random people on the internet to tell you that it's not maybe they're reliable people i don't know who they are if you choose to believe them then heave is better but in terms of the raw stats that i can find on the official website at pen t20 kafras they're the same so keep that in mind um you definitely want dim tree gloves for now you want begs gloves when libras come out you'll be switching out your begs for libras most likely um, unless things change with stats later on and balance changes and muskin shoes you definitely want over Uragon shoes because like i said evasion scales really well with the ninja um i would recommend going full ap accessories the only accessory that maybe you don't want to be full ap could be the sissel's necklace however only if you can still hit 261 ap so ogre ring for most people at try or tear is what you're going to want here for your necklace because you do want to hit the 261 bracket and again um there is the voltara belt instead of the bassy belt if that is what you prefer and if you can get your hands on tongrad belts in the future obviously tongrad belt is best in slot in terms of ap as of now there will be more accessories coming out in the future as well that are not available yet now in terms of crystals for your main hand you 100 want the precision crystals this is a must do not use anything else you need precision crystals for your sub weapon for most damage you can go with the very cheap plus 10 percent crit damage crystals however i decided to go for the awakening spirit crystals vartara crystals also work in this slot because each crystal gives me an extra 150 hp increasing my health pool in total of 300 for having both and they also give 5 ap which is a little added bonus but the amount of times that this 300 hp have saved me in 1v1s and rbf is I, I can't even count them so for me they've been really good and i'd recommend if you are pvp focused go for this as well in your kutum if you're not going to pvp with your kutum i'd probably put the crit damage crystals in your kutum to clear faster for pve which is what i have done as well so you can see in my kutum i've got the crit crystals uh, for your helmet if you're not 62 you're probably going to want to stick with the exp crystals in here until you get to 62 for now Jin halfia crystals are the best that will change in the future for your chest piece i will be changing these to the special attack evasion crystals real soon probably later today to be honest whenever i go to an npc to extract these crystals um, but Jin or bond core bonus crystals is very very good to put in its place the Kydax crystal I got there, this was a login reward a long time ago. I've just been lucky it hasn't broken. It's basically the same as the um, Core Bonus crystals. However, a base Core Bonus crystal, however, it gives 10% stun resistance or stiff resistance or something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I've got. Um, Gin Vipers is best in slot for your gloves. And for the shoes, for now, I've got a combination of the RBF Adamantium and the Black Magic Crystal Adamantium. And the reason being is if you go to your profile, you can see in the middle of the screen at the bottom, you've got your resistances. You want to get your resistances as close to 60% as possible, being reasonable and not sacrificing other important items in your kit. This is as close as I've been able to get to it for now. Um, I think I also would get an extra 5% from my Villa buff. I'm not 100% sure. I think the Villa buff gives you some more resistances as well. And obviously, if you had the Griffin helmet, you'd have another 5% on top. So that's why Griffin helmet's really, really good. And 60% is the PvP cap for your resistances. PvE, you can go up to 100% resistance. In PvP, you cannot anything above 60 percent is not counted so the 64 percent knockdown and bound resistances is reduced to 60 percent when you're pvping someone so keep that in mind so now to get into the movement one of the biggest advantages of the ninja it doesn't use too much stamina for its movement skills and it's got a lot of burst movement however this basic rotation i'm going to show you now is how you can continuously use movement skills on the ninja until you run out of stamina if you change the order of them there is one other order you can do them in to do it be continuous but if you do change them usually you're not gonna you're gonna hit a cooldown before you can reactivate a skill 
because of the way the cooldowns work but again you can use these skills in pvp in any order you want to reposition yourself with your opponent and we'll be showing you guys some repositioning skills a bit later on as well but the basic movement that you want to get ingrained into your muscle memory is what i'm about to show you slowly now and then i'll show you the full animation in just a minute practice this whilst you're getting from a to b and you're doing pve so you'll be starting with right trigger and forwards to do ninja step after ninja step you'll be doing ghost greeting after ghost greeting you'll be doing ghost step into a stance switch you'll with that's forward and y or you can just press y but forward and y is the best way to do it when you're trying to go forwards obviously then right trigger to raise your sword left trigger to silent charge forward left trigger right bumper to do a murderous intent go step stance switch with forward y and then you're gonna do a go step and directly after the go step you're gonna do shadow stomp like so and then after your shadow stomp you're gonna switch back to your awakening if ninja if ninja step is on cooldown you'll just raise your sword do silent charge do murderous switch at this point ninja step will be off cooldown you'll do ninja step ghost greeting ghost step stance switch raise your sword like so so now i'm going to show you the animations in full speed and what it would look like So I don't know if you can notice, I've got a bit of lag right now. Some of my skills are taking a second before they go off cooldown. But that is how it would look like in a real scenario. Now, one extra thing. We're going to start talking about cancels in a minute. And one of your main cancels is smokescreen concealment, which you can use with a crazy amount of abilities. One of the main ones you can use it on for getting as close to someone as possible would be Ninja Step. So when you ninja step right at towards the end of ninja step just hold a and if you hold a the end of ninja step you're going to do a cancel to a smoke screen into a concealment and this is what that would look like and then go step will take you out of concealment after that if you want to stay in concealment obviously don't go step and then you can sneak your way around so that's one cancel for increasing your movement and you can also incorporate that into the movement skills we talked about earlier on. So what you can do is move like this. If you want to get as much distance as possible so practice that when you are going from a to b because those are your core movement skills now before we continue on the smoke screen cancel because like i said you can cancel smoke screen with a lot of abilities let's talk about combos and how you're going to ingrain these combos in your muscle memory so as you can see we are now in history up and this is how i really learned to do my combos efficiently is just by grinding a lot um i have watched yellow's video on combos and i have practices combos but every time when it comes to pvp scenario i just never got it ingrained in my muscle memory enough to be able to just execute them on the fly so i just ended up spending a lot of time grinding in history and just practicing the pve combo in history and then after I did that for I don't know how many hours, it just comes to you. You'll just be able to throw combos together. Now I will show you the main PvP combo I use after I show you this PvE combo. I would highly, highly, highly recommend practicing this combo in Archmans and Trees if you don't have the gear to get into Histria. And if you do have the gear to get into Histria, you probably already know the PvE combo as it is. It's slightly edited, so the way I grind now is I try to use as many as my skills as possible to just ingrain those skills in my muscle memory. And if I'm trying to learn something new, I'll take that and bring it into my PVE sessions. For example, there is a new smoke screen cancel that I have learned from Zed that I didn't know about, which is you can smoke screen off of a block jump. 
So these days when I block jump, I practice block jumping with the smoke screen to get that in my muscle memory. But the regular full combo I like to use in PvE, is I start with the Chaos Spree, which again, you don't use this in PvP. But after Chaos Spree, you do Murderous Intent into Seamless, into a Katana Shower, block jump, get behind them, Surplus Ascension, Blade Spin, into, sorry, what was that? That was the Ankle Cutter, into the uh, Malice, then you're gonna do Shadow Slash, and then you, when you're doing, when you're holding left and right bumper, or right or right and right bumper, depending which direction you want to go in. Um, if you just hold right trigger, you're going to cancel your shadow slash into a heart aiming, then into fatal blow, then into the flow. So that would look like this. And then after that combo there, I will be doing shadow step with the um, clone. Something like that. And then after Shadow Step with the clone, I will be doing the Rebalm skill here, followed by Moonlight, followed by Shackles. And you can also throw in a beheading before you do the um, before you do your Shadow Stomp to get your Shadow Stomp to do more damage. But beheading is a skill that I like to catch people with, so I don't practice that in here because this is basically practicing my combos after I I'm practicing the skills that I might use after I catch someone if I have to extend it most of the time I actually catch them beheading the dead and it's not a skill I'd even use you've got so many choices to extend combos beheading the dead is not something I'd recommend using to extend them so you will be practicing this PvE combo in your high-end spot whether that is trees Ackmans or Histria as much as possible so I'm gonna go through it once here at full speed and just wait for these guys to group up a little bit if you get CC just pick up from where you left off So I'll just practice that over and over and over again and eventually all these skills are ingrained in your muscle memory so you're not thinking about hitting them you just hit them so we're gonna go back to BA and I'll show you guys the main combo I use in PvP so in terms of PvP I really have one main combo that I like to use as much as possible because I've just found it does the most damage out of all my other combos that I've been using on my ninja and the main combo is got a few different variations and depending on how you catch your opponent but let's start with your basic block jump grab so after the grab i'll do a murder intent into seamless into surf ascension blade spin with the shuriken cancel and then after the shuriken mantle i'll do the floor sweeping shadow stomp cancel with the with the flow which would look like that usually dead at this point and i'll finish with losing the strain if they aren't dead and that is pretty much as long as you can hold them down um, if they're getting up you can end with a blade spin as well to try and if they got a little bit of health just to finish their health off if the blade spin isn't going to kill them i'd recommend holding on to your blade spin for the next time you catch them the next one is if you catch with a murderous intent now there's two different ways if you catch them and you straight away know you've catched them so you've hit them with the murderous you know you've catched them you go into seamless normally what happens is when you catch people with murderous is you're 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 moving around a lot before you get the catch and normally you hit them murderous and you'll ghost step because you won't register that you cc them straight away and you'd be ghost stepping to try and um uh, not get cc'd yourself as murderous isn't safe if you do ghost step after your murderous you don't have time to seamless so normally what would happen is you'd hit murderous you'd go step you turn around then you extend with the um with the serpent ascension and then again after blade spin shuriken malice floor sweeping shadow stomp shadow clone illusion restraint and for the pre-awakening grab let's say you're in pre-awakening when you grab them even if it's after a block jump one thing you can do is stance switch murderous Serpents, Blade Spin, Malice, Floor Sweeping, Rebalm. You could do it in that order. That usually does a bit more damage if you do the Stance Switch first to get the um, to get the Serpent Ascension off. I don't know why it does a bit more damage than doing it in a different order, 
But again, if you've got a lot of AP, you don't need to start and switch first. What you can do is stay in your pre-awakening. So after the grab, Malice, Stomp, Clone. And then after the clone, you can then start switch, Ascension, and then do Blade Spin, Rabat. So that also does work, but I don't know for some reason, the first combo I showed you just does more damage. It might be something to do with modifiers that I'm not paying attention to. But that is what I do off a pre-awakening grab. Now, if I was to CC, so my main bread and butter combo um, is the blade spin cancel into concealment. And then usually the CC comes from my beheading of the dead. Um, and if that happens, I get the malice floor sweeping stomp with the clone and then after the clone star switch murderer seamless ascension if you feel like you're a bit slow you can skip the um seamless so you can go straight from um what's it called murderous to ascension if it looks like they're getting up and your cc isn't extending long enough skip the seamless and then you can finish with losing a strain as they're trying to run away if they're still alive try and kill them to get the final kill those are the biggest hitting skills so the the most damaging skills on your ninja your number one most damaging skill is serpent ascension after that is your floor sweeping stomp uh stomp clone is your next most damaging one you don't have to floor sweeping cancel um there is different ways you can do your shadow stomp so one way is to floor sweeping cancel your stomp to so you skip this long animation um, another way is to use a shuriken flow from neutral so if you're standing still you can also do the shuriken flow and finally the new thing they've added is uh, ghost uh, ghost step into ninja stomp so you can ghost step stomp now as well i need to get this ingrained in my muscle memory a bit better to use it more efficiently but there are different ways to use your shadow stomp normally i'll probably still be using floor sweeping first because it gives you some 10 percent down attack damage modifiers for like 10 seconds stuff like that after you use it but that's why i like using my floor sweeping to cancel my stomp but after your shadow stomp the next most damaging move is illusion restraint and then blade spin after illusion restraint those are your hardest hitting moves so that's why i like to incorporate them in my main combo now Sometimes some of these skills are going to be on cooldown when you're doing when you come to combo someone to kill them. That's where your PVE grind ingraining all these different things in your muscle memory is really really helpful. So let's say you've hit them with losing a restraint. Uh, sorry, not restraint. You've hit them with the beheading of the dead. But let's say our um, serpent ascension and our blade spins on cooldown. At that point. I'd be doing something like this. So I will do a different combo every time. I don't have a set combo for when these items are on cooldown. I'll just figure it out as I'm playing. And that's where the PVE knowledge of all the times you've been smashing these different skills is gonna help you out to fill the gaps. So that's the basics of how I combo people with my ninja. But let's start talking about cancels. So if you watch any of my pvp ninja videos you'll know my bread and butter skill that i go to in every single fight to catch people is my basic beheading smokescreen cancel which looks like this that is my basic catch that you will see me exploit a lot and it's really really good so i'd recommend using it yourselves but the basic concept is when you're in blade spin hold a and if you hold a you'll cancel with the smoke screen and then the smoke screen will get cancelled with a beheading of the dead now if someone's really close to you the smoke screen itself can also cc them and the smoke screen is still a super armor as well so do keep that in mind it's one of your own it's your only super armor cc so instead of extending you could just hit him with a smoke screen and instead of extending and hitting with the beheading of the dead you can just start comboing them right here off the smoke screen with whatever you see fit. Now, that's one of the catches. Now, after pl playing against Z, he taught me a lot about different ways you can use your smoke screen. So, 
Other ways you can catch people with your smoke screen is with block jump. So block jump, as you know, is unsafe when you come out behind someone. So if you come out behind a witch and the witch is held as LCB, for example, just for the right period of time is when you come out behind her, it's going to CC you. So one way not to get CC'd by the witches or wizards LTB is when you block jump behind them, cancel with pressing A, which will smoke screen. Don't hold it, because if you hold it, you end up back in front of them, which is not where you want to be. So you just tap A to cancel it when you get behind them, and then you can grab the witch or wizard. Same with a lot of different classes that have super armor CCs and get behind them. Striker, for example, if he tries to use Rage Hammer as a counter to your um, as a counter to your block jump, that's also going to be the same scenario. This is going to stop you from getting CC'd. Then you can grab him. Usually, a good striker though will try and backstep uppercut you. You won't be able to grab him off the uppercut. But you won't get CC'd by it because you'll be in a, you'll be in a super armor from smoke screen, and then just ninja step to increase your range, or you can turn around and ninja step the other way to confuse him or a different direction. Up to you at that point. So using your smoke screen off a block jump against people that know how to play the class is really 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 important. Um, and you can basically cancel ghost step, uh, sorry smoke screen, with any skill. The quickest way I've found to cancel it. You didn't even see me do anything there, but if you just tap right trigger to throw out a shuriken, you can straight away cancel with a smoke screen. So that is a really good way of just catching someone that's not suspecting it or protecting yourself if your opponent is trying to CC you. It's just cancelling by pressing right trigger and then A. Another way to cancel it is with shuriken malice. So you can just hit your shuriken, cancel with a smoke screen. Uh, another cancel for smoke screen is your shuriken fly. You can hit shuriken fly, cancel with smoke screen. Also, fox claw, you can cancel with smoke screen. Illusion of restraint, you can cancel with smoke screen. Moonlight, you can cancel with smoke screen. Shackles, you can cancel with smoke screen. However, one important thing to note one thing you can't cancel with smoke screen is your shadow slash. If you do shadow slash and hold A, it's going to cancel with your heart aiming instead of smoke screen like that however if your heart aiming is on cooldown then it will cancel a smoke screen so that's something you need to remember so i wouldn't use shadow slash i spend a lot of time practicing the class before thinking about using your shadow slash to cancel your smoke screens with because it's usually just going to end up cancelling with heart aiming instead of your smoke screen. and crescent slash again you can cancel that with smoke screen and floor sweeping can get cancelled with smoke screen and throw kick can also be cancelled with smoke screen. Now, these are all the different abilities that you can cancel with smoke screen. And why I've mentioned all of these is sometimes you will make a mistake. You'll accidentally do a fox claw when you don't want to. So it's important just to remember when you do that, if someone's coming in for the CC, you can smoke screen cancel your animation and protect yourself with the super armor. You can also use some of these abilities as bait with smoke screen. I have not mastered this myself because I've only learned about all these different cancels as of a few days ago. So I'll be trying to um, use smoke screen in different ways in my future videos, not making any promises, just saying I'll be trying. We'll see what happens when those videos post. But for example, anyone knows how to play against a ninja knows that your moonlight is unsafe. So if you go through the animation of moonlight, he might try to come close to you to um, CC you, same as shackles, and then you can smoke screen to CC him back if he's using an unsafe um, ability. So you can use it as baits. And again, if you were to press one of these abilities by accident and you didn't want to be stuck in that animation, you can just cancel it with the smoke screen. Um, finally, I wouldn't recommend really using it with Illusion and Strain, but you can definitely catch people out. Because again, people that know the class know that Illusion and Strain isn't a CC. So if you hit them with the Illusion and Strain animation and just cancel it very early on, you might, get a, you might be able to bait out a good CC off of that as well. So those are the different reasons why I've mentioned these different cancels. But a very, very important cancel with smoke screen in terms of defensive is in your block jump. So when you do block jump in RBF or large scale, 
You can use it when you get behind them to smoke screen to super armor and then get away. Or you can use it to cancel your block jump in the animation itself. So if you were to block jump, press A, you would get this as the cancel animation, which will put you in a super armor and you can ninja step out. So it's a very, very good way to disengage in large scale. Use your block jump to wait for some of your cooldowns to come off. Cancel the block jump with smoke screen to put yourself in super armor. Also increasing your evasions then ninja stepping as far away as you can. And finally, the main skills I'd recommend, the main bread and butter skills to cancel with smoke screen is the block jump that we talked about. So when you get behind someone, cancel that with the smoke screen. Shuriken is another good cancel with smoke screen. Um, the katana throw is another good cancel with smoke screen. And obviously my favorite, the blade spin cancel <clears throat> into beheading of the dead. Any of the skills I used to show you, you can do the concealment beheading of the dead right after as well. Anything you cancel with smoke screen can be turned into a concealment beheading of the dead catch. So keep that in mind. There's lots of different avenues to catch people with the smoke screen cancel. It's not just the blade spin. Guys, that is the foundations for my ninja guide for the console. I hope this helps you out. Key things to take away. Practice your full combos on PvE mobs. Take what you've learned into PvP. Learn your different smoke screen cancels. That's what's going to set you apart from other ninjas. Always be practicing your movement. Every ninja, your movement can improve. Mine is not very good at all. I've got a lot of work to do in my movement. Maybe it'll get better in the future. But I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful to any ninjas out there. And I'll see you guys in the next video.